Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we have a vocabulary lesson and we'll delve deep into the topic of fashion. So without any further ado, let's talk about 50 clothing items that are not usually covered in student books, but are commonly used by native speakers. Everything's in English. All you need to know. All right, how did you learn to speak English? Let's begin with outer garments. Outer garments or outer wear. This is something that we put on top of our clothes when it's cold or just to make our outfit complete. Number one, puffy jacket. It's a quilted coat insulated with duck or geese feathers. It is one of the most recognizable jackets for winter. A puffy jacket is a wardrobe staple, since it's something you will definitely want for bone-chilling winter days. Number two, windbreaker. A windbreaker is a light jacket and is designed to resist wind chill and light rain. If you're looking for that casual 90s vibe, the windbreaker is the way to go. Windbreakers are perfect for semi-active lifestyles. And a pretty sweet windbreaker. Number three, pea coat. Another type of coat is a pea coat, which is also sometimes called a navy jacket. This is a thick double-breasted coat made from a navy blue colored heavy wool, but it can also be found in other colors. The reason why people sometimes call it a navy jacket is because sailors in the navy used to wear it. Look, guys, has anyone seen my good pea coat? Sure. Number four, trench coat. In fall or spring, you might need a lighter jacket, which is when a trench coat comes in handy. It is a long beige coat with buttons and a belt of the same cloth. You can tie the belt around the waist or tie behind. This coat was popular in the detective movies of the 1940s. A uh, trench coat. <laughs> Number five, puffy vest. A puffy vest is a sleeveless jacket. When you live in milder climates, the puffy vest is an excellent way to keep warm and stylish all winter long. A puffy vest! Number six, varsity jacket. This jacket's sleeves are typically white, while the body is different color. Varsity jackets trace their origins to leather sweaters, first introduced by the Harvard University baseball team in 1865. It is traditionally worn by high school American football players with the school's letters on the jacket, which is why it is most common in high school and college. Well, here's your stupid varsity jacket back! Number seven, motorcycle jacket. Another type of jacket is a motorcycle jacket. It can be found in vinyl and leather. Good motorcycle jackets are made from leather since they can stand the velocity and natural elements like soil, rock, water, and vegetation while on a motorcycle. Number eight, fleece button-up shirt. It is a button-up shirt made from fleece with an added layer of insulation in the body. If you want to learn more advanced vocabulary, not only on the topic of fashion, but also in areas such as business, art, marketing, technology, law, college admissions, and many others, sign up for our course from Advanced to Proficiency. We will have 25 lectures covering not only Lexis, but also advanced grammar rules, typical mistakes at proficiency level, synonyms, and idiomatic expressions. After each lesson, you will get a quiz to check your understanding, as well as practical activities to use what you learned. For instance, you will create your own ad, describe pictures, summarize videos, write a short story, and many more. So grab the promo code through the link in the description below and start changing your English today. Let's move on to daily wear. Number nine is a crop top. A crop top is a top that falls just above uh, or around the belly button. The interesting fact is that the cropped shirt was originally created by men for men and was part of men's fashion for years before women began wearing them. It's the high neck little crop top. Number 10, gingham or plaid shirt. This is an element of a Southern style wardrobe. Both plaid and gingham are popular colors. Gingham is a two-color pattern that is popular in red and white, 
or blue and white. While plaid is color bands or stripes that intersect each other, forming a particular shape. Might as well start wearing a plaid shirt. Number 11, distressed faded shorts or jeans. Distressed fabric is the fabric manufactured to look more relaxed and worn in. This is why distressed jeans or shorts often have rips, tears, or fraying edges. Distressed shorts are typical in California. Number 12, ripped jeans. You can also see ripped jeans that are jeans with rips or holes in the fabric. Many distressed jeans can also be ripped jeans, but not all ripped jeans will be distressed. Traditionally, distressed items look worse with more holes or rips and more fading. You had ripped jeans and a leather jacket. Number 13, tees. A tee is another name for a t-shirt. There are many different types of tees, such as simple logo tees, soft, oversized beachy tees, or ribbed black tees. I see you got the extra long tees there. Number 14, off-shoulder midi dress. Off-shoulder dresses usually have a neckline that sweeps across the chest just above the bust. Midi length ranges from below the knees to just above the ankles. Now, let's look at a few types of sleeves. Number 15 is balloon sleeve dress. These dresses usually have sleeves that fit tightly from wrist to elbow and become fully rounded from elbow to shoulder. In a way, they resemble balloons. And this is where the name comes from. Number 16 is puff sleeve dress. Puff sleeve clothing items usually have sleeves that are gathered at the shoulders and caught in at the cuff to create an inflated puffy effect. Puff sleeves and balloon sleeves are actually pretty similar. The balloon sleeve gathers back to arm width, while the puff sleeve may not. Number 17. Ruffle sleeve blouse. A ruffle sleeve is a short sleeve made from one or many layers of ruffles. We can buy ruffle sleeve blouses, maxi, or mini dresses. 18. Cargo pants. Cargo pants are loose-fitting casual cotton pants with large patch pockets halfway down each leg. They are also sometimes called combat pants uh, after their original purpose is military workwear. Cargo pants buddies! 19 is a v-neck sweater. As the name says, a v-neck sweater is a sweater with a v-shaped neck. So it's pretty simple. Number 20. Crew neck shirt. A crew neck shirt is a type of shirt that has a round neckline and no collar and is often worn with other layers. Number 21, bowed neck shirt. It's a wide neckline. A wide neckline is a neckline that passes just below the collarbone and connects at the shoulder seams. 22, raglan or raglan sleeve. You can find both raglan shirts and raglan t-shirts. The sleeve extends to the neckline covering the shoulder. It creates a long, diagonal seam that runs from the armpit to the neck. This style is most commonly associated with children baseball or softball teams, as well as non-professional adult teams. 23. Spaghetti strap top Another popular top is a spaghetti strap top. It is called a spaghetti strap since uh, it has thin shoulder straps similar to the shape of pasta. The strap is usually adjustable. The shirt's neckline has a slight curve. 24. Slacks. Slacks are pants on the dressy side that are not made to be part of a suit. Suit pants, instead, are strictly designed to be part of a suit and are not usually worn separately. In a sweater and slacks. 25. Polka dot dress. A type of dress that has large number of small round spots that are printed in a regular pattern on cloth. Many girls adore polka dot dresses, while there are also many who hate them. It's the girl in the polka dot dress. Number 26. Stripe skirt. The striped fabric is covered in stripes, which is where the name comes from. Fine, okay, striped skirt, burgundy sweater, that's it. 27. Shirt cuffs. A cuff is the lower edge of a sleeve that is turned back. It is now made of stiff bands of linen worn under the coat sleeve either loose or attached to the shirt. In a way, they look similar to handcuffs that the police officer will put on the arrested man. 28. 
shoulder pads. Shoulder pads are a type of fabric covered padding used in men's or women's clothing to give a wearer the illusion of having broader and less sloping shoulders. Are those shoulder pads? The next one is 29. It's a tank top. Another type of a top is a tank top. It is a sleeveless, colorless shirt with usually wide shoulder straps and no front opening. In case you're wondering about the differences between a tank top and a spaghetti strap top, the main difference is the straps. While a spaghetti strap top has thin spaghetti straps, a tank top mostly has wide straps. Another important difference is that tank tops can be worn by both men and women, while spaghetti strap tops are worn by women only. Also, tank tops do not have adjustable straps. They are part of the way the short is cut. Number 30. Flare jeans. Flare jeans or flares are pants that become wider from the knees downward, forming like a bell-like shape. Flare jeans are coming back in style in 2022. 31. Slouchy sweater. A slouchy sweater or a slouchy bag is loose and unstructured. Let's proceed to the shoes or footwear section. Open-toed sandals are those that do not cover the toes or the tips of the toes. Black ankle boots. Typical for tomboy style wardrobe, ankle boots are boots that reach to just above the ankle. You can also see high-heeled ankle boots. And ankle boots, pearl choker, and charm necklace. Combat boots. A variation of ankle boots is combat boots. Similar to combat pants, they are usually worn by soldiers. However, combat boots are also becoming popular in casual fashion these days. You can wear combat boots with jeans and an oversized sweater, or combine them with a trench coat and a turtleneck. Wearing combat boots on a three-day beard. Number 35. Aspidrill sandals. Often called just aspidrills, aspidrill sandals are light canvas shoes with a plated fiber sole. She got new aspidrills. Pumps or pump shoes are shoes or boot styles with flat or low heels. The heel can be non-existent or it can be as high as one to a one or one half inch heel. Referring to shoes as pumps dates back to the 1500s, when men and servants wore shoes without heels known as pumps. From there, the pumps evolved from the plain, flat shoes worn by men to embellished shoes worn by women. 37. Oxfords Oxford shoes are a type of lace-up shoes with a low heel. Oxfords were derived from a type of boots that gained popularity at Oxford University in 1800. Mules. These are shoes with no back around your foot or heel. About two-thirds of a mule is covered in softer materials and the back remains free. You can find mules of various heel heights, like while some of them have high heels, others look more like slippers. And flip-flops. We usually wear flip-flops to the beach or in the shower. Lost flip-flops! Now, it's time to look at some accessories. Let's start with headwear. Beanie is our number 40. It's a small, close-fitting hat often worn on the back of the head. You're wearing the beanie. 41. Headband. Another type of headwear is a headband. It is a band of fabric that people wear around the head as a decoration or just to keep the hair off the face. You can wear a headband to remove makeup or to play sports. For instance, the fabric headbands used by tennis players are called sweatbands. Number 42. Beret. Beret is a typical French headwear. It is a woolen cap with a tight headband and a soft full flat top. Putting on a beret. Gotta wear the beret. The next one is a necktie. A necktie is another name for a tie. It is a narrow length of material worn around the neck and tied in front. Necktie is the original name and is therefore more formal than a tie. A necktie! Bow tie is another form of a tie and this is a necktie in the form of a bow or a knot with two loops. You can wear it with formal or informal suits. What do we think? 
Bow tie or no bow tie? Earmuffs. It's a pair of soft fabric coverings connected by a band across the top of the head that are worn over the ears to protect them from the cold. Think of them as headphones that you can wear in winter. I made these sweaters and earmuffs for you guys. And finally, let's wrap it up by talking a bit about jewelry. 46 is charm bracelet. Charms are small decorative trinkets that are symbolic and meaningful to the owner. A charm bracelet, then, is a bracelet on which you can wear charms. Traditionally, the bracelet and charms are separate, but inexpensive bracelets come with charms. This allows the recipient to customize the charm bracelet. Yeah. I also have my Christmas charm bracelet. Cufflinks are small decorative objects used for holding together a shirt cuffs around the wrist. No cufflinks. Wow. Tie pin. A tie pin or a tie clip is a thin, narrow object used to pin a person's tie to their shirt. Number 49 is a brooch. It is a small piece of jewelry that can be fastened on a dress, blouse, or coat. It is more common to use brooch for women, while you can call the men's version a pin or a decorative pin. And finally, the last item on the list is a clasp. It is a device used to join together the two ends of a chain, bracelets, and necklaces. Well, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like vocabulary lessons or if you want to see more grammar. I will see you all very soon. Have a fun and lovely day. Bye-bye.